Hello, I'm so excited to review a wonderful new product with you today. Escoda Brushes came up with four new beautiful travel sets, each containing three different synthetic brushes from their collection. Each brush has been carefully crafted by hand by Escoda Masters, and in this video I'm going to focus on the blue set and we'll show you how each brush performs not just in a standard test where I'm going to look at precision and water retention, but also during a real painting process so you can decide for yourself whether you love to paint detailed botanicals or birds or large landscapes, if these would be a good choice for you. I'd love to hear your impressions of this review, perhaps you've already tested some of these brushes, please let me and everyone else know what you think in the comments below, and if you're new to the channel and enjoyed the demo, don't forget to subscribe. Before we get into the detailed testing, let me explain why these Escoda travel sets are worth a look if you love watercolor painting. First of all, these brushes are a cruelty-free and excellent synthetic alternative to a traditional brush made out of real fur. They're not your regular cheap synthetics. Escoda has done a great amount of research in terms of making synthetic fibers that mimic the real thing and in terms of how they actually build these brushes by hand, combining three diameters and three different lengths, achieving a perfect tip and very good water retention as you will see in the demo. Reason number two is obviously convenience. Each brush set is designed to fit in your pocket. I have small hands and you can see it would fit into my palm. You simply take out the metal case, turn it around, and you have a regular brush. They look very cool, like silver bullets or something. And if you do a lot of urban sketching or uh, landscape plein air, this is absolutely a gem. You will love it. Side note, I have two small kids who are constantly threatening to get into my supplies, so I love the fact that I can store my brushes in a way that's definitely more secure than simply leaving them in a tray. And finally, reason number three is each set is carefully curated by Skoda team in consultation with their artists. So it really takes the guesswork out of selecting a brush set when you're traveling. It's so well thought through. You have a large, medium and small sizes, a variety of shapes to choose from, and you can be confident um, if say you wanted to get started with um, good selection that would give you flexibility when you paint, uh, or perhaps if you want to give it as a gift to an artist and you don't know much about brushes, Escoda has done the homework for us and picked up a great selection for each set. Now let's get into a detailed review of the blue brush set and I will do the red, black and the green sets later this month. So we have a Skoda Ultima on size 16. It's made out of Tendo Synthetic. It's an almost perfect imitation of squirrel hair. Because of its exceptional softness and capacity to retain water, this type of synthetic is expected to pretty much replace the squirrel hair in the future, so this will be interesting to try. We have a Skoda Perla Round Pointed Brush in size 10, and it's made out of white Tory fiber. It's one of the softest and uh, typically used in watercolor. Quite different from uh, Ultimo, as you will see, but quite interesting to play around with. And finally, we have a Skoda Prado round pointed brush in size 6. It is made out of Tame Synthetic, which is one of the most valued synthetics because of its similarity to sable hair. So it doesn't only imitate the color of uh, sable, but it also imitates the spring and absorption of liquids. It's perfect for watercolor and uh, could be quite good for acrylics too. And spoiler alert, because um, it's so precise, I really loved it and ended up using it quite a bit. Now let's do a couple of tests, starting with Perla. And I will compare it to my natural squirrel brush and a real sable brush to look at the precision, how much water it holds, and things I can do with it. So the first thing you will notice is that it unfortunately doesn't hold a lot of water, um, definitely worse than the real squirrel or the real sable, but, but, uh, what you will notice right away too is that it's super precise and uh, it has a lot more spring and precision than the squirrel brush. And so what that means is um, if you don't care as much about water retention and dipping your brush more frequently, uh, but you want a brush that will hold the tip and get the details done while being able to cover fairly large surfaces, this is actually very good. Um, the blending washes are pretty comparable in all three brushes, so I will show you in a minute how it works in a real painting. Let's test the Ultima now. I expect it will hold a lot of water, um, as a real good synthetic uh, alternative to a squirrel should. And as you can see, it just goes on and on. 
very soft. The tip is not very precise, but that's expected with a squirrel brush. So definitely better water retention than Perla for large washes would probably be a better choice. Um, it's a good performer. Um, it's a mid-range in price. So I would say a solid choice if you're more into larger landscapes and loose watercolors. Finally, Prado. And as you can see, it's exceptionally precise comparable to my real sable and uh, still able to hold a good amount of water. Um, it also has some other advantages which only became obvious to me when I did the real painting tests. Um, so when you look at the price difference uh, between synthetic sable and real sable and consider the fact that uh, this is a cruelty free product without taking advantage of a uh, living creature, it's uh, such a needed high quality alternative to sable brushes and you will see just how great it is when we paint something real with it. So let's do the real painting tests and use these three brushes in different types of paintings so you can see how they actually perform. I'm going to do a quick landscape, a few birds and a very large detail botanical illustration to give you an idea of different applications of these brushes. So let's start with the large Escoda Ultimo. As I mentioned, it's probably as good as it gets in terms of imitating squirrel. Normally a brush like this performs well for large washes, so you can see I'm easily able to cover the entire area with water and then drop some colors in. I don't notice a lot of difference compared to my regular squirrel mop. It bothers me that the tip doesn't spring back into place, um, like in sable brushes, but that's what squirrel brushes do, which is why generally I prefer sable or synthetic sable. Then I test uh, the Perla, and there's some interesting things that I've discovered. The Perla was okay uh, in terms of water retention, not excellent as we saw during the test. It doesn't hold much water, but at this stage of my landscape, I'm doing wet and wet. Um, water retention is not as important. Um, so, okay during wet on wet. Much better performance when I do wet on dry, where I just used the tip and did some blending on these tree reflections. Much, much better. So this is more um, comparable to, say, what a sable brush would do. Um, it performed also much better for my birds. The tip is uh, precise enough for small feathers and I was able to blend the colors onto larger areas which wouldn't be possible with a finer brush and would be quite annoying with a squirrel brush because the tip wouldn't stay, um, wouldn't return back to its shape. But the biggest surprise was when I used the Perla on negative painting for my large botanicals. So you can see here, I was able to get into every groove between the leaves. This is really quite marvelous for a synthetic. For this particular work, it does the job as well as a real squirrel brush would, and uh, the tip comes back into place easily on its own, so I don't have to dip it in the palette every time. So very cool. By the way, if you want to see the full tutorial on this white peony, a link card above and also we'll leave a link in the video description below. So in conclusion, you will have a lot of control with this brush, but it's not going to hold a lot of water and therefore wouldn't be the best for large washes and loose painting, but it's kind of amazing on large subjects where you want to cover fairly big areas of color, but also stay very precise and have a lot of control. So I'm curious if anyone tried it on urban sketching. I suspect it would be really good for doing buildings and things of that nature. Now let's talk about Prado. And uh, this one was simply awesome. And in my opinion, it performed super close to what I would expect from a real sable brush. So here's me doing a very detailed work on the trees. Considering it's rough paper and I'm painting with a size 6, not a size 1 or 0, it's kind of miraculous that I'm able to do such small details, so very cool. Um, similarly, it performed well on my birds. The tip is precise enough for the small feathers and um, I absolutely loved it on botanicals because it held a ton of water so I was able to do long, thin outlines in addition to just really precise strokes where I needed them. So as a bonus, take a look at what Prado was able to do uh, when I needed to lift some color. So Perla brush wasn't able to do this at all. Um, I wouldn't dare use my real sable to lift color because uh, it would wear out too fast. But since uh, this Prado is a synthetic, 
it can withstand so much more pressure and because it absorbs so well it lifts the colors perfectly i absolutely loved it on the waves super good so in conclusion, I would give uh, the Ultimo three and a half stars. It is a quite a good alternative to a large squirrel brush if you're into softer brushes and you do a lot of loose paintings and large washes. The price is mid-range, so you get good quality for your money. Um, there's nothing outstanding about it, but it's certainly a good alternative to squirrel. Perla, uh, I would give it a four. But keep in mind, this is in the context of my own style. And so I found the fact that it doesn't hold a lot of water, not very uh, distracting, but some people might think differently. I thought that it's a very good brush for paintings where you want to maintain precision while also maneuvering larger washes. So particularly good for things like negative painting. And of course the Prado I absolutely loved, but again, it fits my style. I thought it was a really, really close um, alternative to a real Sable. It's super precise, it has a lot of spring, it holds quite a bit of water for a small brush. And uh, as a bonus, I mentioned, you can do a lot of color lifting if you're into that kind of thing. So of course these ratings are purely in the context of my own style. And those of you who know me know that I specialize in highly detailed botanicals and nature art. And I also do quite a lot of uh, commercial work in a decorative style. So keep that in mind when you look at how I tested it and my reasons for liking or disliking certain things. This video is meant to give you detailed information, but only from a perspective of one professional artist. So I encourage you to do more research on your own for balance before, before you decide to purchase them. I look forward to seeing you next week with more tutorials and art supply reviews. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.